Right. Good morning, church family. Welcome to another Sabbath day where we, we can meet together and um, worship God via online. So this morning, me and Safira want to welcome you uh, from your own home. And um, yeah, this, this morning we have uh, Pastor Hillary sharing with us a message of hope. And before we start, we want to pray. Safira. Gracious Father, we thank you for another day and we thank you because we have um, this means, Lord, where we can worship together as a church family. Lord, we just pray that you may guide us, you may teach us, Lord, through your spirit and through your word, and may our worship today be acceptable to you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now I'm going to give it over to the Teolilos for um, some worship. morning once again. Uh, let's sing. I believe God. Uh, hope the children will join us as we sing this song. I believe God. I believe God. Ask what you will and it shall be God. Trust and obey. Believe in and say, hey, I believe, I believe God. I believe God, I believe God, it shall be done even as he said, trust and obey, look up and say, hey, I believe, I believe God, every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, every line, all the blessings of his love be mine. Every promise in the book is mine. I believe God, I believe God. Ask what you will and it shall be done. Trust and obey, believe it and say, hey, I believe, I believe God. And if you want salvation now, and the Holy Ghost in power, trust and obey. Hey, I believe, I believe God. I believe God, I believe God. It shall be done even as He said. Trust and obey, look up and say, Hey, I believe, I believe God. I believe, I believe God. Angels, we have heard on high. Singing sweetly through the night. Come and worship on, on uh, pendant knees. Yeah, your king has been born. A glorious in excelsis Deo. Angels, we have heard on high. Singing sweetly through the night. And the mountains in reply, echoing their break delight.
Hallelujah, my God is our last um, uh, song for uh, this morning. And if you're watching us now or later on, and you haven't made the decision to make Yahweh your God and your Savior, um, it's never been too late. Uh, no one has come to him and been rejected. Uh, everyone is welcome. The good thing is, that is life. And that is blessing if you want to make him your personal Savior and your God. Not skilled to understand what God has will, what God has planned. I only know and is my hand. Such one who is my savior. I take him at his word and me. Christ died to save me, this I read. And in my heart I find a need of Him to be my Savior. That He will leave His place on high and come for sinful men to die. You can't exchange, so what stay I? Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was, my God, He is, my God, He's always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, He was. My God is, my God is always gonna be. Yes, living God, He let me breathe. My strength, my soul is from the spring. That He who lives to be my King. Was I to be my Savior? That he would leave his place on high and come for sinful men to die. You can't exchange so much did I. Before I knew my Savior, my Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God, he was. My God is, my God is always gonna be. My Savior loves, my Savior lives, my Savior's always there for me. My God he was, my God is, my God is always gonna be. I am not skilled to understand what God has will, what God has planned. I only know when he's right there. There's one who is my Savior. Thank you, Telilos, for that um, wonderful singing. Amen and amen. So now I just have a few announcements um, and then we'll have Valentine pray, pray for us this morning. So the big question for, for a lot of you that are faithful givers, as, as we know, um, God says to still return what is his, his tithe and his offerings. Um, we can do that via online. So that's uh, through e-giving. So you go to the app, um, to the, if you're on your laptop, you go to e-giving the org.nz. 
and you put in the search there and then you put in your details and you can do that online. Or the other option is to do it via your local bank and um, you put Henderson Seventh-day Adventist Church and the bank account number and your, ref your name as your reference and uh, where you would like your offering to go to. Um, and um, yeah, if you are watching this later, just pause it. Or if you want to write down the numbers, just pause the video and you'll be able to do that with no problem. The other thing is, if anyone is in need of food parcels or face mask, please um, let Vaka know on 021-101-7591. Uh, or you can contact me as well on 021-327-003. And uh, another announcement is, um, and Sister uh, Victoria has organized for a doctor to, um, to, if you have any questions about the vaccination, to, um, there's a webinar happening um, on Monday uh, 22 at 7.30 p.m. Now, I just want to um, enforce that, yeah, we believe in the freedom of choice as a church we support, but if you do have questions about it and you one a discussion it is a close no. web webinar so whether it's just going to be us so you're safe to ask any questions and then hopefully it's a good open discussion um the other announcement that i would like to make is uh online communion we're thinking of doing that on the 11th of december and um if you want to take part we will happy to organize pickup or drop off depending on what suits you best um, and if we don't have your contact details up to date to um, organize that um, and you wish to take part or we don't have your address up to date just uh, please uh, contact me, um, us on 021327003 so that we can make that happen for you so that is the announcements that we have for today and now i'm just gonna invite our um Sister Valentine, if she could pray for us. Dear Father, Lord, as I come before you this morning, I like to say thank you for everything we can pray for. Thank you for your wonderful protection and your care and creation in our journey of the week. And thank you for giving us this opportunity to worship you on this team, Lord. And Lord, I would like to ask you to be with those people um, that couldn't make it this morning. And um, also, um, we are Pastor Henry, as we are going to um, um, pray, um, worship us this morning, Lord. And um, thank you for being a pastor of our team. And then I say, Amen. So that's over to you, Pastor Hillary. Just remember to unmute yourself. Okay. Um. Get my screen quickly. Um, you see my screen? No, no. not yet. Not no. yet. Okay. Yeah. Just press. Right. We do now. Yes. Okay. Can you can see. Okay. Can everybody see that? Yes. Good. Good morning, church. It's good to be back uh, with you at Henderson again. Uh, we come from time to time because I work alongside uh, Pastor Axel uh, as a support person for him and also for the church. And it's always a blessing to come together around the word of God, around the word of God. I, um, I just need to sort out. Okay. Now let's begin over there. <clears throat> a pastor was at the church one day and he was at the end of his sermon and he said to the people for next week, for next week, I want to preach on, uh, you know, from John chapter 22. And I'd like all of you to go home and read John chapter 22. And then next week, we will preach from that chapter. And he said, everybody who wants to do that, will you just raise your right hand? And everybody raise their right hand very obediently. 
And the pastor was very pleased and the church was very pleased and everybody went home. The next Sabbath, they came back to church and uh, the pastor got up and he uh, took out his Bible and he said, um, how many of you read John chapter 22? And most of the congregation, they raised their hands and some even raised their Bible. And the pastor said, uh, that's very interesting because in my Bible, it's John 1 to John 21. There is no John chapter 22. And of course, some people were red faced, others not, um, because they were so used to just telling the little lies. But, but today I'm, I'm not going to refer to John chapter 22 or any chapter. We're just going to focus in on one single verse. Just one single verse. I know that every single one of you, all of us, every single one of us, we have a favorite Bible verse. And if you are like me, my favorite Bible verse is seasonal. Now, Dolly, your favorite Bible verse last year may be different to the favorite Bible verse this year because we respond to the word of God as God blesses us and we reach up to him through prayer, and he reaches down to us through his word. And so our favorite Bible verses, they change from time to time. I went to uh, you know, BibleStudyTools.com, BibleStudyTools.com, and I, I wanted to know for 2021, from January to November 2021, this year, what were the top five Bible verses that were searched by, uh, by uh, people. And so the top five hits, they were these. Number five was Genesis 1 verse 1. And all of us, we know Genesis 1 verse 1. It simply says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life but have everlasting life. Genesis 1 is an amazing chapter. And I think every single person who studies the word of God should begin at the beginning. And that is Genesis 1 verse 1. Genesis 1 verse 1. And then number four. Number four was, um, was Philippians 4.13. Philippians 4.13. Number five begins with God. Number four begins with us. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then number three, number three was Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. And I think everybody knows Romans 8.28 because it says, and we know. So everybody knows, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to those who are called according to his promises. And then number two, number two, number two was simply Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 simply says, for I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Hope and a future. And that is a favorite Bible verse of many people, especially in Henderson Church. Uh, it's a favorite Bible verse of a number of people. And do you want to guess, Betty, what is the number one? I know you know it. You shy to say it. But I think everybody should know it. Maybe everybody shy to say it. But the number one Bible verse that was searched this year on BibleStudyTools.com is simply John 3.16. The gospel in a nutshell. For God so loved the world that he gave his one, one and only son, his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But have everlasting life. And so for, for this season for me, for this season, I have not chosen one of those five verses. In fact, I, I was interested uh, in the music today and the Tulelo family came up and they, 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 they started leading in the praise. 
And it just hit me right there in the middle of the head. Wow. It was one of those wow moments. And I thought, how did they know what I was going to talk about? Because I didn't know what they were going to sing about. And it was, uh, I was delighted and excited, you know, that they chose that song number two. Do you remember what they sang? Number two, it was angels we have heard on high. You know, that hallelujah song, uh, that glory song, uh, that celebration of the Christ event that happened 2,000 years ago, uh, not in winter as we celebrate it, uh, but maybe on the spring evening, maybe early summer evening, um, when the angel sang and Christ was born and Christ was born and the world is moving. The world is moving uh, very rapidly. I was speaking to another pastor just on a Thursday and he said, would you believe it? It's almost December. And then his little girl said, yes, dad, would you believe it? It's almost Christmas to remind him that even though it is supposed to be Jesus' birthday, we still want Christmas. I mean, presents on his birthday. It's kind of ironic, but it's good. But it's good. Um, so I've chosen a text, a text that uh, most of you know. It's simply Isaiah 9 verse 6. It's an old favorite. And so we're going to take a quick look at an old text, a quick look at an old text, Isaiah 9, verse 6. And I'm going to ask uh, Elder Emson, Elder Emson, if he can read that verse for us. Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And to us a child is born, a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, his name shall be called. And there are five names of our Christ. And, 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 and then the next verse and says, and, 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 and his government, and his government shall have no end. On this planet, we change governments every four or five or three years, but uh, uh, the increase of his government shall have no end. It simply says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. For unto us a child is born. And, 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 and when I came online today, the very first face I looked at was Pastor Axel and Sister Rochelle's beautiful daughter. And uh, Pastor Axel, uh, if you are still there, uh, can you just tell us in one or two sentences how you felt the day when your beautiful princess uh, was born? I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I, I had a child. <laughs> you couldn't believe it? Wonderful, yeah. Or yeah. couldn't you believe that you have such a beautiful child? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And is she a delight to you? Yes, most is, certainly. Is she a joy to you? Most certainly. Is she a treasure to you? Most certainly. And this is what happens when a child is born. Uh, I tell you, uh, you, have, you ain't seen nothing yet, as the song says. Because when the grandchild is born, you're going to go bananas. Uh, because... You know, when we have our own children, we, uh, we're very strict with them. But when the grandkids come, we just spoil them. We just spoil them. But, but, but it says, for unto us a child is born. There's an old song that is entitled, When a Child is Born. It says, a ray of hope, and you know the words. But uh, it says, this comes to pass when a child is born. Isaiah, Isaiah wrote this about 750 years, more than 700 years before the Bethlehem event, Isaiah wrote this prophecy. This is a prophecy. And I do declare that uh, 
almost the entirety of the prophecies in the Bible points uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ, points to the Lord Jesus Christ. This one, definitely, in fact, Isaiah is often called the gospel prophet, the gospel prophet. There's so much gospel in Isaiah. Isaiah is the gospel where you find Christ large and in charge throughout uh, the, 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 the words that Isaiah penned uh, 750 years before Jesus was even born. So, so, so it says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. I wonder if somebody can read this, this verse here very quickly. Galatians 4 verse 4. Is there anybody who would like to read that? We need a quick volunteer, otherwise we're going to be alarmed. Okay, I'll read it again. Sure. But when the fullness of the, of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. For unto us a child is born. And here Paul, writing to the church in Galatia, he repeats that. He says, uh, God sent forth his son, for unto us a child is born. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, born under the law. So we have an idea immediately of whom Isaiah was speaking. But the text goes on. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. I wonder who this son is. There's an old text. I wonder who would like to read the next text that identifies who the son is. The first part says that Jesus is this child who was born. And who is the son who is given? Anybody like to read that? Okay, let me, re okay, let go, me read. Go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe, believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Galatia chapter four, verse four. Thank you, thank you. That was my, my bad. It's John three sixteen. John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave unto us a son is given. For God so loved the world, the world that he gave, that's given, his only begotten son. So who is the son who is given in, 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 in Isaiah 9 verse 6? It is Jesus. The child who is born is Jesus. The son who is given is Jesus. And then the text says, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. On this planet Earth, uh, we have elections from time to time. Uh, in New Zealand, is it every four years? We have elections and people go to vote. And uh, sometimes we vote a government in. And uh, then as soon as the government in, we, we praise the government or we criticize them. That's just the nature of, of, of human politics, of human politics. But God is lifting us up to a higher plane in this verse. And, and Isaiah writes, and he says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government uh, represents the one or the body who rules and reigns. And I want to suggest that Isaiah, because he's speaking about Jesus, he is uh, appealing to us. He's admonishing us. He's advising us. He's suggesting to us. He's stating to us that the government of my life should be on the shoulders of this child who was born, the son who was given, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh, Peter writes in 1 Peter 5 verse 7, and I think everybody knows that one. It simply says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Cast all your anxieties, your heartaches, your burdens and needs on him and let him take care of you. Let him take care of you. When I was a, a very young lad, my father used to 
Uh, we used to walk to church even though we had a vehicle. We enjoyed just walking to church. Uh, it took us about 20 minutes to walk to church, but we would walk through the neighborhood greeting everyone. And uh, my father said, the people should see us every Sabbath morning walking to church. You said when we drive, we just zip by them. Nobody notices it. But when we walk, we can interact with the community. And many times, many times, I still remember, he would pick me up and put me on his shoulders. And that was the best place for me. You see, when I was on the shoulders of my dad, I could see farther than anybody else could see. When I was on the shoulders of my dad, uh, I didn't get tired because he carried me. And this is what uh, God wants for his children. He says, cast all your cares upon me, for I care for you. Isaiah takes that verse and he says, and the government of our lives should be upon his shoulder. And the question is, whose shoulder is Isaiah talking about? Isaiah then goes on and he identifies and he says, and his name, this child who is born, this son who is given, this one upon whose shoulder we ride. His name shall be called. His name shall be called. Names are very important in the Bible. I don't know whether you know what your name means, but I know what my name means. And I, I hope uh, that I live up to my name. I live up to my name. And his name, his name shall be called. And, and Philippians 2 verse 9, that beautiful hymn that Paul pens in the second chapter of Philippians. It says, wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I try to mention that text in every single time I preach anywhere and everywhere because he has been given a name which is above every name and in that wonderful name, every knee will have to bow. Beings and angels above all must acknowledge his love. And in the name of Jesus, you can have the answer now. His name is so wonderful. And his name shall be called. There's power in the name of Jesus. The, um, uh, Dr. Luke, he writes in Acts chapter 42, um, no, chapter 4, verse 12, 4, verse 12, not 42. Acts 4, verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. There is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. So there is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that demons tremble at the sound of his name. And so Isaiah, looking down the prophetic corridors of time, looking 750 years ahead, he says, and his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Wonderful. And of course, there's an old song that says, Wonderful name he bears, wonderful crown he wears, wonderful uh, blessings is triumphs afford, wonderful Calvary, wonderful grace for me, wonderful love of my wonderful Lord. When Jesus was on earth, he did wonderful acts. In fact, Matthew writes, and he says, and when the chief priests and the scribes, the elders and the deacons saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased. The church leaders at the time, because of the politics of the day, they were not happy that the children were crying out in the temple saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Why? Because they saw the wonderful things that he had done. The wonderful things that he had done. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Um, the day when Jesus lifted you up out of the mighty clay and placed your feet on the rock today, uh, that day, that day of your salvation was a wonderful day. And every day that God blesses us with his provision, with his power and his presence, 
Uh, it is a, a, a wonderful, wonderful life that we live as children of God. Isaiah says, his name shall be called Wonderful. And then he says, his name shall be called Counselor. His name shall be called Counselor. And when we think of Counselor, many times we think of Graham Ewer, who was a relationship counselor. But in the context of our text, uh, it is more than that. It is more, uh, um, the meaning is more the counselor, uh, like a lawyer and attorney, someone who represents you, who speaks for you, and who gives you uh, legal counsel, gives you legal counsel. First uh, John 2 verse 1 says, my little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate, a counselor with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Even that title of counselor is wonderful. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. The mighty God, Elder Emerson, you, may, you maybe can read Revelation 15, verse 3, because I know that's from one of your favorite books. Can you read that for us, please? Sure. <clears throat> and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Now, who is singing? Who is singing? It's the redeemed. Yes. Singing the, uh, they sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. You know, when we're standing on the sea of glass, all the redeemed, the angels are going to uh, uh, go quiet because this is a redemption song that we are going to sing. They've never sinned, they've never been redeemed, but the angels are going to be quiet, and then we're going to sing this song. And, and John in uh, the Revelator, he writes some of the lyrics of that words, and he says, Great and Amazing are your deeds, great and marvelous are your deeds, O Lord God Almighty. O Lord God Almighty. You know the reason why we'll be able to sing uh, of the Lord God Almighty up there is it because we are experiencing the amazing grace and the love and the mercy of the Lord God Almighty down here. Down here we sing what a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And when we get to heaven, we'll continue that song, uh, singing of, O Lord God, the Almighty. So Isaiah says, unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. And then he says, the Everlasting Father, the Everlasting Father. Um, and an and, and easy... He, who is he talking about when he's talking about the everlasting father? In fact, Thomas, Thomas himself asked that kind of question because Thomas was a little bit confused. And so in John 14, in John 14, you know, John 14, where Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. Uh, you know, John 14 uh, very well. In verse nine, Elder Emerson, in verse nine, uh, what does Philip, what does Jesus say to Philip? not to Thomas, to Philip. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? And in the next verse, uh, Jesus continues and he says, uh, because I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. Jesus is the Father of our salvation. He is the federal head that died, you know, on Calvary for our salvation. And uh, he is the God who came from heaven to earth to dwell among us, and we beheld his glory, uh, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He was the icon uh, of God, as, as Colossians chapter 2 says. Uh, so uh, he says, for unto us a child is born, that child is Jesus. Unto us a son is given, that son is Jesus. 
and the government shall be upon his shoulders, the shoulders of Jesus, and his name shall be called Wonderful. That's our Jesus counselor. That's our Jesus, the mighty God. That is our Jesus. And then he ends by calling him the Prince of Peace. Elder Emerson. Yes. Uh, sorry, the, the next verse. Um, there we go. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them be, let them be afraid. And it's interesting that he ends like this. Because the angel sang, you know, when uh, at, at, at the Christ event, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the shepherds were in the field, and the angels, angel choir just appears. You know the story better than I do. The angel choir appeared uh, in the sky, and they began to sing glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards all men. And, and, and when they describe, when they announced that Christ was born, they announced him as the Prince of Peace, as the Prince of Peace. And so today, as we prepare for the Advent season, um, and the Tulilos introduced it very well, our text for today, and the text for us all to take home today, maybe when you can go home, take your Bibles, open it up, and uh, turn to Isaiah 9, verse 6, and take a pen or a pencil and underline it, and write today's date. Uh, and then, maybe in this week, God will give you the capacity, if he has not already given it to you, to memorize that text. So then, while everyone is talking about Christmas, and about the gifts, and about the tree, and about the, 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 the shopping, and all of those things quietly in your heart. Uh, you can just say, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government of my life shall be upon his shoulder. Because his name is called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Father, I've gone a bit over time today, but this text was so packed full of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that as we've just scratched the surface of this single verse, that Jesus might rule and reign in every home and in every heart. And somebody under the sound of this prayer today might not have made a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ yet may not have been baptized yet, may want to join the church, become a member of the church, but I haven't told anyone yet. I pray that your Holy Spirit will work with every single one of us, lead us, Father, into all truth. And our Father, we thank you for the promise that was made, the provision that was made for our salvation, and for the presence of God, even among men, and in our homes, and our hearts, even today. Thank you for the text, and thank you for the context. Henderson Seventh Adventist Church, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.